You think you know something about the world? Listen to this man. He's Professor of International Health at Karolinska Institute. He challenges our prejudices and view of the world. Many of my students say they can never live like us about the developing countries. Whereas a leading Swedish politician just said, we must maintain our advantage. It means that the students think that those are the countries they can never improve. And the, the very well-informed politicians say, oh, they are catching up. Let's hurry up. They are catching up with us. It's a completely different view about the world. Eh? So, so how, how could we then look at the world? Well, I split it again in the way you saw here. These are continent colors, child mortality on that axis, income on that axis, and this time we move Sweden backwards in time like this. It moves very fast backwards, and now 200 years. And see, where was Sweden 200 years ago? Well, it was more or less where Liberia is today. Huh? And then Sweden started to improve, but very, very slowly. We still hadn't started schooling for everyone. It was very, very slow, and it went like this and that, you know, nothing to be proud about. <laughs> and finally, after about, we have moved, I think, 48, 40 years, we were like Angola. And we continued more or less, but now we started with economic growth. Can you see the bubble moves this way much more? And, and we are seeing an improvement also. Child mortality is getting down. And this is just infant mortality during the first year. And after eight 80 years we are like Mozambique, still in Africa. Uh, all these generations of development in Sweden is like Africa. And now it's getting really better. And we are moving. This is India. Sweden is passing India 1920, or present India. And 1920, like Senegal. Uh, Senegal is not as rich as Sweden, were, but have the same child mortality, not hit by HIV. We're still in Africa. Uh, and we have that idea Africa is like this. That's huge difference within Africa. So even that we cannot look at one place. And when I started university, 1968, Sweden was at the same position as Mauritius, still Africa. But Mauritius is really the most successful country in Africa. Then there are no more African countries. So down here, you will imagine what little country I will compare Sweden with today when we end up after this successful journey. Well, it's, of course, Singapore. Huh? And, and how can one look upon this? Well, I look upon this as a, as a train travel. Sweden has gone all this way. It's like zones on the train. Uh, we have zone 1800 up here. We have zone 1900 and we have zone 2000. And different countries are in different zones. I know that countries develop differently. Some are economically advanced, others are socially advanced, some are, have a good democracy, others have a good gender equity. There are different, different speeds of different things. And also there are differences within countries. Look at United States. I split United States in white, Asians, Hispanic, uh, Native Americans, and black Afro-Americans. Different. Three groups end up in the 1900s zone in United States. And now I'll split China. And China I will split into provinces. Look at the different provinces of China. Hong Kong, Macau, Shanghai, and Beijing all went into the 2000 zone. Don't make any mistake. Shanghai has a better health than United States today. Shanghai has the same purchasing power as North Europe. They are already here, and others are there up there. This is Guizhou one of the poorest provinces in inland China. And when I split Guizhou in rural and urban, you see where the big difference is in China. The, the cities are successful all through China, whereas the rural area here in China is in the 1800 so. So in China, I can go from 1880 until 2006. That is within China, different population groups. And we know that the Chinese people and the Chinese government doesn't like that. They're trying to do things about it. But we have to realize that they are very good at building cars, you know. <laughs> so have, make no mistake. And they have a lot of money here. Eh? The accumulation in foreign, ex in, 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 in foreign reserve, money reserve in China, is now two to three times bigger than the bank bailout in the United States. They didn't trust the world economic system. They kept their own money. And now they can stimulate their economy in China with as much money per person as we are doing in Sweden. 
So it, it's a really, really serious. So, so I can understand, you know, when the Swedish students stand, stand there and say they cannot be like us, that will never happen because their teachers told so. But the knowledgeable politicians, they say, oh, we must maintain our advantage. They are catching up, they are catching up. We have to hurry, we have to go this way. It is really, it's really interesting that those two views on the world exist in parallel. Forget about two types of countries. And it's not about whether you should call them developing countries or call them third world or south or anything. There are just no thing as two groups any longer. At least let us divide that in three groups. Low income, middle income, and high income. Zone 1800, zone 1900, zone 2000. It's very, very rough, but it's a way of making the head much more clear. And most of the people in the world, they live here in the middle. They live like people in Sweden lived from 1900 to 1999. That's their life condition. If you mix together all this group and tell it it's developing countries, it's, it doesn't help you in understanding. And parts of China, then you remember, they were already here. They're already down into this group. So it's that complexity also. And also inside India, we have this real big range of, of uh, economic and health situations. Yeah. So how shall we look at this? Who is right and who is wrong? Is it the students who say they will never come down and live like us? Yeah. No, they probably will. But that will put a real high pressure on the environment. No doubt about it. It will really result in an increase of carbon dioxide emission. India and China today start carbon power plants, you know, once a week, big plants at present. Because they've decided they want electricity. They want a washing machine. It's as simple as that. They want the modern life. And then people down here argue and say, oh, no, no, you can't release this carbon dioxide. Stay up there. Be poor. Don't destroy the climate. <laughs> it won't work. At the same time as the politicians say, oh, let's keep our advantage. Let's then pay for the, for the climate. And we can get away with it. <coughs> I think we need a completely new view about the world. I don't, I don't want to argue in any of these issues. I just think that when people say they cannot live like us, why not? Sweden has made all this trip. Countries like Bangladesh, Egypt and Brazil is now going faster than Sweden ever did. They're already getting closer, so although some are still very poor. Huh? And we must maintain our advantage. Why? What's good in that? Isn't it very nice in Sweden to live like people do in Finland, Norway, and Denmark? Doesn't that create a very good neighbor, neighborhood relation and a very safe and secure? Wouldn't it be better if all people in East Europe also had the same condition? Wouldn't it be good if, if Somalia would have the same life condition in Sweden, then the pirates would be gone? Eh? And, 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 and this idea that Sweden must have an advantage, I would like to, to maintain Sweden's culture, Sweden's language, Sweden's environment, Sweden's democracy, Sweden's freedom. But I don't want to maintain our advantage, because I think the advantage is of no good for my grandchildren. Thank you very much, and think about your worldview.